In this video, I'm going to show you how to read your water meter and use the information to conserve water at home and save money on your water bill. When I was at my sister's house in New Jersey, I saw that her water meter shows the quantity in gallons. But here in New England, most water meters show it in cubic feet instead. In Maynard, Massachusetts, where I live, there's more than one type of meter, so I'll start with the older type first and then cover some of the newer ones. The kind of meter we have at our house has three features. A little red pinwheel that spins whenever water is being used, a large pointer and dial marked off in tenths of a cubic foot, and a row of digits showing whole cubic feet used. The little pinwheel rotates any time water is being used, so if it's not moving, you know all the water in your house is shut off. Let's start by looking at how much water is used by one of our toilets. I came down here to the basement while a family member went upstairs to flush it. First, I wrote down where the pointer was pointing. 0.18 cubic feet. Then they started the flush. I watched as the pointer started moving. When it stopped, I wrote down the number above the first number like this, 0.29. Using the calculator on my cell phone, I subtracted the starting number from the ending number, so it used 0.11 cubic feet. To get gallons, I multiplied that by 7.48, the number of gallons in a cubic foot. I got 0 0.82. This toilet is a dual flush model, rated for 0 0.8 gallons per flush. So for the low volume side, what we measured is very close. That means it's working correctly. We flush that same toilet again for the high volume side. We subtracted and then multiplied. This time we got 1.28 gallons, just what the toilet is rated for. Previously we tried the one in our downstairs bathroom and we got radically different results. Okay, so we started at 0 0.67 and we ended up with 0 0.18. But since the pointer crossed over 0, we have to add 1 to the ending number before subtracting to get the right result. Multiply that by 7.48 and you get just under 4 gallons per flush. Well, that didn't make any sense, so I took a look. It's a Kohler Wellworth model from about 10 years ago or so, and it says 1.6 gallons per flush right on it. So Kohler had to certify this as a low-flow toilet when it was manufactured. Federal regulations since 1994 require that all toilets sold in the United States flush at 1.6 gallons per flush or less. Now I'm going to cover a little bit more about how this is possible and why this toilet is wasting so much water in my next video. Just so you know, we didn't actually have to replace the toilet. We were able to fix the problem for just under $10. So that's good for measuring something that uses less than a cubic foot of water. But what if you want to measure something that takes more than a cubic foot of water? Perhaps uh, taking a shower or running the laundry. Then you have to use the digits in the top center of the meter face. This number is how many cubic feet of water have passed through the meter since it was manufactured. Before starting, record the number including the tenths on the dial, both at the start and the end, then subtract. But you have to be careful about the rightmost digit because the way it works can be deceiving. To understand why, let's use a clock with hands for an example. Just before 11 o'clock, the hour hand, the small one, is pointing more to the 11, but if you wrote down what time it was, you'd say it was 10.57, not 11.57. As soon as the minute hand moves past the 12, then you'd record it as 11.03. On the water meter, the rightmost digit works kind of like the hour hand or the shorthand works on the clock. When the pointer is on the left side, approaching the zero, anywhere after 0.5, the rightmost digit shows the number of cubic feet it will be after the pointer passes zero. So in this example, the correct amount is actually ends in 5.67, not 6.67.
Okay, so let's look at a newer type of water meter that's available in some of the houses in Maynard. This kind of meter has more digits, which actually makes it easier to read. Notice the decimal point just under the row of digits, with the last two digits to the right of it. You can just read the cubic feet down to one hundredth of a cubic foot, and you don't have to worry about the pointer in the dial below. I went to a brand new house still on the market and asked the real estate agent to go upstairs and flush one of the toilets while I went down to the basement and watched the meter. At the start, it reads 42.1665 if you count the dial, but 42.7 is close enough. At the end, it reads 42.3454, or let's just say 42.35. When we subtract, we get 0 0.18 cubic feet. Converted to gallons, that's 1.35 gallons, approximately. I forgot to go upstairs to take a photo of that toilet to find out what it was rated for. If this is supposed to be a 1.28 gallon per flush toilet, then it's slightly over flushing. My guess is, is that the plumber who installed it was in a hurry, didn't take the time to read the directions, and didn't adjust it when he installed it. If you have a water meter that doesn't look like any of these that I've shown you so far, then please go to my website, energystories.org, click on the Contact Us link, fill in your name and address, and let me know that you have a water meter that I haven't covered. And that way we can get together and maybe show how that one is read as well. Now all the detail I've shown you here might seem a little bit daunting, but I found that if you try it a few times, it gets a lot easier. Now of course, Everybody has different challenges. For example, my basement is pretty well outfitted. It has a concrete floor and walls. It's all painted, it's brightly lit, and there's a nice staircase to get up and down. Now your basement might look a lot more like the one where I used to live. It had a dirt floor, field stone walls, and there was a pull chain light bulb with a lot of cobwebs. In spite of all that, I was dedicated. I took a portable lamp, a chair to sit on, and a broom to sweep away the cobwebs. But some people are just too intimidated by a place like that. Now you might be someone who's not very good at numbers, especially decimals or fractions. Or maybe there are other challenges. In any case, my advice is get someone to help you. Maybe a friend, relative, family member, a neighbor. Um, maybe they could go to the basement and read the meter and do the calculations and you're upstairs. You can communicate by cell phone and they can signal when it's time to flush the toilet or run the shower. Or you can just holler up and down the stairwell if you need. My point is, there's no shame in asking for help when you need it. I encourage you to just ask. Most people are willing to help. I heard a rumor recently that they're going to introduce water meters that don't have any readout on them at all. Only the town would be able to read them when it's time to calculate your bill. Personally, I think that's a terrible idea. I think people ought to be able to see how much water they're using and take measures to conserve water, especially with the price of water going up and water resources essentially threatened in many places. My next video in the series will be about toilets, why they waste water, and what you can do about it. I'll post a link on my website, energystories.org, when I have it available. If you want to help support my work, either through a subscription or a donation, please use the links on my website. Thank you.